Hey there, friends. My name is Desiree, aka Mama Friendly, and I'm trying something a little different this year when it comes to our homeschooling. All of the main information is going to be found in the very first video of this series, which I'll link up here in case you've missed it. But the Cliff's Notes version is that I've been homeschooling my son his entire life. He's nine years old and on the autism spectrum. He has nonverbal autism along with a few other medical diagnoses. My son also has a complete and absolute undying love for all things Disney, much like his mama. So this year I thought it would be fun to give our unit studies a little bit of a Disney twist. So every two weeks this year we're going to start a new unit study based on a Disney ride, movie, character, etc. We're going to be doing our academic work around that theme, but also at least one cooking activity and at least one art activity. So in these videos, I want to show you guys some of the things that we do to fit the theme. And I have a Pinterest board pertaining to each of the themes. And so along with every single one of these videos, there's going to be a link in the description box to that particular themes Pinterest board. So make sure that you check those out because I am only showing you some of the things that we're getting into every week, but the board is going to have more activities and also activities for kids of different ages and different abilities. So with all that being said, let's get into our theme. All right, friendies, so our very first activity for this theme is we're going to make galactic Play-Doh. I'm going to have the original recipe linked in the Pinterest board, so you can check that out in the description box below. But the version I'm making is going to have a little bit of modification to it because we are gluten-free and that includes things we play with. So instead of two cups of all-purpose flour, I'm going to be using two cups of gluten-free flour. You're also going to need a cup of salt, a tablespoon of cream of tartar, a tablespoon of vegetable oil, I'm using avocado oil, two cups of water, some black food coloring, and it says here a quarter cup of glitter. You can use more or less according to what you feel makes sense. And um, you could also use, it says two teaspoons of mint extract. We opted out of that. I also wanna let you guys know that I halved the recipe. So I just gave you the measurements for the full recipe, but since it's just me and my son, I decided to do half the amount. And this is extremely simple to do. You're just gonna combine your liquid ingredients, so your water, your food coloring, and your oil in a large stock pot. Turn your stove to medium heat and just stir so that it kind of warms up. Separately, like you're seeing me do right now in this bowl, you're gonna combine all your dry ingredients except for the glitter. So the flour, the cream of tartar, the salt, everything goes into this bowl, you mix it up, and then once it's mixed, you put it into the hot liquid on the stove and just stir, stir, stir until everything comes together. It's at this point that you would be adding your mint extract if that's what you're choosing to do. And you just keep on stirring, stirring, stirring. You wanna make sure that all of the dry ingredients are incorporated and that it starts to look like a dough and pull away from the sides of the pan when you stir it up. At this point, you want to just dump the whole thing out onto a cutting board and let it sit for about 10 minutes because you want it to cool down enough that you can touch it with your hands and it won't hurt, basically. Once it's cool to the touch, you can make a small well in the center of the dough and add your glitter and then you just knead it, turn it, fold it, whatever you have to do to get that glitter incorporated into the dough. And you're pretty much done. Do with it whatever you would do with your typical Play-Doh. But it looks so cool and sparkly and space-like, huh? I found these super cute counting and alphabet themed Star Wars books that my son absolutely loves. The great thing about Star Wars is that there are books of all kinds for kiddos of all ages and all abilities all the way up to encyclopedias. So there's something for everyone. So this activity is super, super cool. We're gonna do a watercolor resist craft. We're gonna need water, black watercolor, a brush, we're using a foam brush, coffee filters, and crayons. 
You should probably use either black, silver, gray, or white crayons for this project. So what we're doing is we're decorating our coffee filter to look like the Death Star. And the beauty of this is that you could be as creative or not as you like. I can't draw, so I just helped the kiddo do a bunch of vertical and horizontal lines all over it. And near the top, we did a circle so that it would look like the laser. Once you have all your crayon art down, you're going to take your black watercolor and you're going to paint the entire coffee filter. So the idea is that once this watercolor dries, you're going to be able to see the crayon kind of peeking through behind it and it looks super cool. And this might be my son's favorite activity, I think, all year. We're making lightsaber sensory bottles. So I got this plastic Voss water bottle because it has the best shape for this. I'm just peeling all of the labels off so that it's just see-through. And what we're using is regular tap water, but we're also gonna use different colors of glitter glue. I also have some more of that loose glitter from the Play-Doh activity before and glow sticks. So we're just gonna put all of these things into our bottle, close the lid up tight, and then I bought this really cool silver tape to wrap around the lid and the top portion of the bottle. And this is going to serve two functions. It's going to look super cool and make it look like the lightsaber handle, but also it's going to seal the bottle so that your kiddo can't open it and spill glitter and water everywhere. So obviously Disney Plus is the place to be to watch any and all things Star Wars, but I wanted to especially show you guys this series that I just found. It's an eight part docu-series kind of showing the behind the scenes of how they made the Mandalorian but I think it's super cool because it breaks it down into all these different facets of production like directing writing great for older kiddos okay can you find play yeah good work how about let's find Jump. Good, yeah. So one of the components of our Ronto wraps is we need pita bread. And finding pita bread that is gluten-free is basically impossible. I found one brand, but it had milk in it, and we're also dairy-free, so that wasn't gonna work. So I found this recipe on gluten-free on a shoestring, which that blog has been around for a thousand years, and they've never let me down. For this, you're going to need one and three quarter cups of all-purpose gluten-free flour. You're also going to need a teaspoon of xanthan gum if your flour blend does not already come with it, which mine does not got the kiddo very excited in the background. You're gonna need 35 grams of this Expandex modified tapioca starch. It has to be this brand apparently or it will not rise, it won't work. One and a half teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of a neutral oil like vegetable oil, canola oil, I'm using avocado oil. You need one egg and one egg white. So we're gonna let these sit out because they need to be at room temperature. And you need three quarter cup or six ounces of milk at room temperature. I completely missed that when I was doing my grocery list. I would have bought some plain almond milk if I'd seen that. Um, yeah, so we're going with what I've got, which is coconut milk. That's probably going to affect the texture. It's definitely gonna affect the taste. But like I said, we're working with what we got, so I'm just hoping it works. So to make these pita breads, you're going to want to preheat your oven at 400 degrees. And if you have a pizza stone, you can use that. I don't, so I'm using an overturned baking sheet. And I'm going to stick it in the oven while it preheats so that it also comes to temperature. We're going to add all of our dry ingredients into this bowl and just mix them together to combine. Once all of your dry ingredients have come together, then you're going to add in the oil, then your eggs, 
then your milk, and you're gonna beat all of that together as well until everything is well combined and the dough starts to pull away from the sides of the bowl. It says it should take about two minutes. Basically, you're looking for kind of the same consistency you had earlier in the video when we made our Play-Doh. So I'm trying to just bring everything together with my hands here, kind of knead everything together. And I don't know if it's any different with a regular flour, but let me tell you, this gluten-free dough was extremely, extremely sticky. Like, very sticky, very tacky. I kind of wish I'd oiled my hands before I started working because even after washing them with soap, I still have some stuff on me. So this is something to consider if you don't love this sort of sensory experience luckily i'm okay with that sort of thing for the most part and i still thought it was too much so just letting you know this is kind of you know a bit more hands-on than maybe some kiddos might appreciate Luckily, my husband was nearby, so I asked him to move the bowl away from me and replace it with this pan that I had standing by with more gluten-free flour so that I could keep working the dough. I kind of rolled it up into a little bit of a ball, broke it up into eight similar-ish pieces, and rolled those up into balls so that I can flatten them out with a rolling pin. And this was going to be the final shape and size of our gluten-free pita bread. So I'm baking these four at a time. Remember, there's eight total. And remember that pizza stone we fashioned out of our overturned pan? We're going to take this parchment paper that they're on and just take the entire thing into the oven onto that baking dish. You're gonna bake it for two minutes and as quickly as you can, open the oven and flip the pitas over to cook for another minute. Then you're gonna flip them one more time, one last minute. They cook very, very fast. And I definitely think an adult should be doing this because there's always the chance that you're gonna get burned. Much better you than the kiddos. Now here's all eight pitas done, and I don't know why, I'm not sure what the difference was, but there's the second batch on the left and the first batch on the right, and the second batch puffed up much more. Same dough, same everything. So I honestly don't know what the difference was. Maybe I worked faster the second time around, but there's the pita with its little hole. Again, it's gonna be different if you use regular um, not gluten-free flour, but then again, if you're not gluten-free, you could probably just buy pita at the store and omit this entire step. That is perfect. It doesn't have any funky aftertaste or anything, which I was worried about. Buddy, we made pita bread. So I believe I very briefly mentioned the reason that we're making this gluten-free pita bread is because we're going to make Ronto wraps. And this is kind of the signature food of Batu, which is the planet, the Star Wars themed planet that you can visit when you're in Hollywood Studios at Disney World. So the Ronto wrap is a pita sandwich that includes a grilled pork sausage, roasted pork, coleslaw, and a white peppercorn sauce. So this is our attempt at trying to recreate this signature dish right here on earth. So we have pork tenderloins here and I'm seasoning them very simply. It's just garlic, salt, and pepper. I don't want the flavor of any one component to kind of take over the dish. I want everything to be as harmonious as possible. So I'm seasoning these and I'm going to let them sit in the fridge for about a half hour to give those seasonings time to kind of permeate the meat. Now for the coleslaw, you can use something pre-made. I'm making up just a regular, typical mayonnaise-based coleslaw so that we could put it on top. And again, I'm making this now and I'm gonna let it sit in the fridge for about a half hour so that all of those flavors can come together and it'll be ready about the same time as the pork. Just spending some time with the child while we wait. So we're just going to cook the tenderloins until they're cooked through. I'm doing it on medium, medium high heat in this nonstick skillet for about five to six minutes per side. You know what you're doing, right? You can help your kiddos cook pork. Just do it to your liking. So we're just going to plate up our Ronto wraps now. We've got our gluten-free pita. We're going to put down some of this sliced pork. And then these sausages, these are the Duke's shorties sausages or i think these are the tall ones because they're longer 
And I'm sure that there's better substitutes for this, for grilled pork sausage. I couldn't find just a regular pork sausage in my grocery store. And I read online that this was a good substitute. So this is what we ran with. So we've got that, we've got the coleslaw on top, and then we've got some of this white Alabama barbecue sauce, which apparently is almost an exact dupe for the peppercorn sauce they use at Disney World. <laughs> wow. That's very messy, but very good. All right, friends, that's going to wrap up our Star Wars themed homeschool study. This, by the way, has been my son's absolute favorite thing that he's made all school year. I had to sneak this away to use this to record because he has not let it go since we made it. And I honestly can't even blame him. This is super, super cool. Um, the glow sticks didn't last too long, but I didn't expect them to. But from a sensory perspective, this is great. It's just a nice calming thing to look at. We've already gone and bought a couple more Voss bottles so we could try to make some more. The Ronto wraps were absolutely delicious and I'm really impressed with how well that gluten-free pita turned out. Um, I don't know how often we're gonna actually make that because it was kind of complicated, but, uh, but it's cool to know that we were able to do it and we figured it out together. There were so many fun hands-on art activities for this theme and I was so excited to do it because of course it's just in time now for May the 4th for Star Wars Day. So I hope that you guys will enjoy these activities with your own kiddos. Let me know what else you might be doing to celebrate on that day. And as always, make sure you check the link in the description box so that you can find the Pinterest board that pertains to this theme. There are so so many more craft ideas, activities, even recipes that are Star Wars themed that we didn't get to try in this video and I would love to know which is your favorite. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and if you did, I hope you'll please give it a big thumbs up. I'd also love it if you'd subscribe and click that notification bell because I post at least three times a week and I wouldn't want you to miss a minute. Thanks so much again for watching and may the force be with you. Bye!